The city of Philadelphia is gritty, old, yet alluring. It's one of the few places in America where the essence of time is so boldly demonstrated by centuries of urban decay. Hidden below street level are untold secrets. Secrets such as a nearly century-old network of tunnels that sit adjacent to the current subway system, some of which are totally abandoned. These tunnels tell a story of innovation, good intentions, and crime. Let me introduce you to Philadelphia's Forgotten Underground Concourses. I'm your host, Ryan Sokash, and you're watching It's History. Philadelphia has always been well-equipped and ahead of the curve with regards to transportation. At one point in time, a streetcar line ran down nearly every single street of the city's central district. Even today, it's one of the few cities in America to utilize efficient European-style surface lines. Considering that, it should be no surprise that when it came to the construction of the expansive subway network, the city elected to approach the challenge in a very innovative way. Let's start in 1883, when the Market Street subway construction began, and not long before the growing system would become electrified. By 1905, the west part of the subway system was already open for use, and it was an instant hit for locals who could now move around parts of the city at ease. The other noticeable effect was a reduction in street congestion, the plague of all cities. With these two factors at hand, and a general trend for underground transportation emerging around the nation, there was a strong demand for a continued expansion. But expansion came with a major paradox, gridlock of the city. You see, back then, subway systems were typically built using a cut-and-cover technique, which required demolishing existing streets or sometimes even entire buildings to dig a massive trench where tunnel would be laid before being covered once again. As no one wanted to evolve this type of inconvenience, an interesting proposal was made to build utility tunnels where construction material, workers, and equipment could all move below the earth, leaving other vital city logistics to continue mostly uninterrupted. These are the tunnels that would ultimately become the concourses. By the 1950s, a certain value was recognized in this real estate, and under the leadership of Executive Director of the Philadelphia Planning Commission, Edmund Bacon, not only did the city begin to exploit these tunnels, but they were actively expanded. The hope was that middle-class visitors would venture into the subterranean world, using them as a passage to avoid bad weather, but also as a place to do their shopping. To really capitalize on this idea, an entire underground mall named The Gallery opened in 1977. This helped draw attention to the other shops and vendors that were already located underground. The commuter section of the tunnel would be completed by 1984, altogether bringing an additional three and a half miles of tunnel and hidden corridors under the city. At one point, many of Philadelphia's buildings were directly accessible by tunnel. The police had an underground unit. But even back then, there were many abandoned elements of the system. Some of the tunnels were never even open to the public. To offer you a scope of their size, they ran from 8 to 18th Street, and from South to Walnut and Locust Street. And although we might not go as far as saying they were a celebrated part of the city, they were a certain factor of daily life for Philadelphians. That is, until 2012, when Philadelphia, I mean Philadelphia, saw a surge in crime. According to a SEPTA survey from 2012, it is easier to track crime on street level than in the tunnels. There has also been speculation that poor radio connectivity and the fact that a female police officer was attacked in the underground led to a decision that many portions of the underworld should be closed off and sealed. These more recent closures added to the sections located between Arch Street and Ray Street along the east side of Broad Street that have been abandoned for nearly 40 years would at a minimum suggest that a major part of the city of Philadelphia will be falling into the hands of the past.
It is astonishingly difficult to find photographs and detailed information about the majority of the abandoned concourses. However, the section under Arch Street might just give us the best overview on this topic as a whole. The abandoned Arch Street line was originally meant to be a part of a greater delivery system which was to be called the Center City Loop. The loop would have been connected to the Broad Street subway and would have traveled past Broad Street and Fairmount Avenue to Ridge Avenue and then 8th Street. Furthermore, it would have traveled from South Walnut or Locust Street past 19th, eventually turning east on Arch Street and then connecting back to the Broadway Street Line. The part of the tunnel that ran from 8th Street to Market to 15th and Locust has sat unused for 20 years. This section of tunnel was never used for transportation purposes and became a haven for something else entirely, graffiti. According to thephillyvoice.com, if you didn't already know it, Philadelphia is known as the birthplace of modern graffiti. And it all started with a legendary artist named Cornbread, who allegedly tagged walls in the 1960s to get the attention of a girl he liked. Many areas of the abandoned concourse are covered in graffiti. The art evolves in style as time passed, and some of the oldest traces date back to the 1980s. Although graffiti is vandalism, it does become interesting as a historic monument with the passage of time. Much of the graffiti also features a unique hand style that's trademarked to Philadelphia graffiti art. Apparently, many well-known artists have traveled from around the world to add their work to the walls of the abandoned tunnels under the city of Philadelphia that most people don't even know about. For the past 30 years, SEPTA has been leasing the concourses from the city, and although many of them are unused today, there are ideas to recapture the magic of the space. The ideas range from a farmer's market, to places for public art exhibitions, or a return to the original concept of a shopping center. It needs to be pointed out that unlike some of the tunnels we have already covered on this channel, the concourses of Philadelphia are not entirely forgotten. They can be made easily accessible, and most importantly, there is a will for them to be used. But I suspect that only time will be the judge. Thanks so much for watching It's History. For more tales of urban decay, ring the bell, hit the subscribe button, leave us a comment, and of course, check out our daily channel stories. This is Ryan Sokash, signing off.